Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right in corner, we have Oxodia, aka Ninja, starting as the black turn, bottom left in corner. We have Monk starting as the yellow Protoss. This is on Odyssey, and yeah, that's correct. It's going to be Ninja versus Monk, a battle for the ages. BSL 16 Hasu League, round of 16 Group C. I want to give a quick call to action as Zero is currently exploring whether the foreigner scene. This has kind of been the question for the ages, really. And kind of the common problem, I think, that has bled into StarCraft 2 and a lot of other places where we really don't have the backing of Blizzard as a company. I don't think we ever will. There's a lot of other corporations. I mean, Optimunk has been a sponsor of BSL this season, which has been fantastic, but we don't have mega sponsors. By the way, it looks like we're seeing some sort of cheese. Or maybe just a very early scout. So Pylon's still placed in base. But anyway, donate to zero to see whether... I think this is just going to be a gas deal. Wants to make sure that that... Although it's kind of... Maybe to try to tempt to the second geyser. That's one thing is I don't know if Gas Seal at, is as strong as, on Odyssey as other maps. But regardless, there's been kind of that general, going back to the original thought, there's been the general question always of, okay, is it possible to sustain uh, esports? And granted, League of Legends has made it happen because they've got their model. I don't know that it's really been a thing for a lot of other groups. Dota kind of because of open donation, a lot of support from the uh, Ste from Steam, from Valve. But Brood War has not managed to really make it there, um, at least not outside of Korea. And unfortunately, it feels like to me, the view looks like the gas not being sold. The fight over gas and actually gas before. Sorry, never mind. There, we do have a barracks being constructed, but no gas deal. So very early scout, no gas deal. Gateway being grabbed, and I'm wondering if this is going to turn into gateway expansion. But anyway, continuing our rant, uh, my my concern is is that people are just primarily concerned with the Korean brood war scene, and because of the constant monopolization of the Korean brood war scene, there's never an opportunity for the rest of the world to catch up. At which point, StarCraft ends up being locked as a Korean thing only. Uh, Zero is one of the guys that is, he's quit his previous job to try to be a full-time organizer for a year, go to his Patreon uh, for BSL to support, to see if we can close the gap, at least in one way to have someone doing full-time tournament organization. BSL is the premier tournament for foreigners and functions a lot like WCG these days. SCV pulled off gas, probe doing a lot of harassment in the line. Um, Sometimes I wonder if I'd be more suited finding, ooh, Marine able to kill that probe. For, so a lot of harassment, but not a lot accomplished by that probe, and that required a lot of APM. Looks like the factory continued to be built. Looks like the SCV managed to get a probe kill on the opposite side. So maybe not the best game to rant on. Dragoon is being produced. No range as of yet. We'll see how things proceed from here. It's been, part of me wonders if I should uh, commentate other games as well. Because uh, for a while I was commentating to... It looks like it's going to be one gate to expand. I was commentating to like other games to try to draw people back to Brood War. That's kind of how I felt by in the StarCraft 2 space, mostly because my heart wasn't in StarCraft 2. But I don't know. There's something about Brood War that, where I love it. I just think it's an amazing game. It's extremely complex. And since I'm just going to talk about nothing game-related for the first however many minutes of this game. I'm also going to give a shout-out to another game that I think is awesome in this regard, which is Slay the Spire. I highly recommend checking out Baylor Lord's content because he has very cozy streams and Jorb. Jorb's because he's an absolute ninja, if you guys aren't already familiar with that. If you haven't played Slay the Spire, go watch it. Those are two great places to learn. Although I feel like with Jorb's, it's more a great place to be dazzled by what he's doing. Baylor Lord, a good uh, place to learn. It tends to be a little bit more descriptive as far as what's going on. Now we'll get back to the games talk about the other things I follow in the video game space. But anyway, <coughs> Dragoon hunting down that SCV, but this is one aspect of Odyssey that's fantastic, is the ability to kind of sneak behind and pocket in the back space. That probe hunting it down wants to deny that additional information, particularly because I wouldn't be shocked if Monk does want to go ahead and grab an additional base, so bullying that SCV out. Three gate follow-up to the initial Nexus that is going to be a slow research to observatory but it doesn't look like it's going to be all that costly no siege tank at, or sorry there's the siege tank no bunker as of yet siege tank out on the front and a starport being built in the corner maybe to go and have that drop threat 
in the early game. It is possible. I don't see an armory down, so I do not believe this is just for plus one weapons to plus two weapons, whatever, and that would be a little bit early anyway. So it looks like this is going to be a vulture drop. Maybe push back, see if Monk was going for an additional expansion, and then drop into the main. And in particular, if the mine upgrade... Looks like speed's being upgraded. If mine upgrades are there as well, Monk's observatory is coming out late enough where it could be a lot of trouble. He is going to have a good amount of Dragoons initially, though, to deal with things. He's starting to make movements. I really liked his play in particular versus Advil. I thought it was extremely sharp and strategic. Second factory being constructed now from Ninja. See if Ninja lives up to his name. I think in a heads-up fight, historically... I'm not sure. Does, I mean, Ninja's kind of a type of Monk. I don't know how it all works. Second Gas being tacked on for Monk. So maybe thinking about going for... So now he's got the robotics facility in construction. Also diving into the natural. Managed to pick off a siege tank and might get an additional siege tank. And he's done so. Two siege tanks down. Wow. Two siege tanks with... <coughs> honestly, not a lot of Dragoons. Using the Zealot to buffer a lot of damage on entry great initial play by monk that's really going to put ninja on the defensive also the dropships cutting into his siege tank count overall and he might want to keep the vultures at home base now mine research just starting we do see monk starting to work on that cannon to go ahead and open up that potential third base and we have all sorts of tech being dropped a forge an observer <clears throat> Excuse me, <coughs> an observatory still of lingering bits of the cold that was present in the last call, uh, the last cast. <coughs> it looks like Monk, even though he's opening up this re expansion, is instead going to grab the nine o'clock, which actually might be more defensible. <coughs> you might have a read that there's a dropship because of the smaller siege tank count on the front and the lack of siege tech. More dragoons move up to the front, and if he was able to do it with just four, pick off two siege tanks, this is going to be an extremely tough defense now. <coughs> Excuse me for Ninja. As a follow-up, the Vulture's moving out. The Dragoon's piling in. Not enough SCVs repairing the bunker, so it falls. Two Siege Tanks there, but with six Dragoons, they got to play very defensively. And now, Ninja's natural expansion completely breached. The dropship on the way. Looks like there <coughs> aren't a lot of defenses in position, though, so that Vulture could get a lot of damage done. The natural expansion completely obliterated for Ninja. Sneaking back out momentarily to try to get a view on this. The Vulture's holding up short. The Observatory sees the Vultures, at the very least. <coughs> and unfortunately, on the production cycle, we do have a Photon Cannon warping in, but a Dragoon out of position to help provide that defense, so a lot of probes are going to fall. So tit for tat. In this instance, a Ninja living up to his name, able to get a surprise attack. One Vulture goes down, solid probe defense defending themselves the... Dragoon able to go up and mitigate some of that damage, but between the two, that was a so that was a massive amount of, of loss. That was a huge probe bleed, and that really cut into all of the work that Monk did earlier. Three siege tanks now staging out towards the natural. With that ninja actually able to secure a bit of a lead, rebuilding that barracks on the front so he can construct more factories, I presume. Still locked into his base, hasn't started plus one weapons as of yet. However, Monk does have two additional bases that are going to come online fairly rapidly. And I think he picked... He, okay, so there's a second dropship out. I think he picked off that first dropship if... I was reading that bot, that <laughs> a little bit sleep-deprived and also still recovering from illness on this cast overall, which is one of the reasons it might be rougher than usual. Third factory <coughs> being built. The Reaver looking to go do some drops. High ground Dragoon easily going to be able to pick up that high ground siege tank. We were going to bleed some shield. The vultures in the dropship going to try to mirror the movements of that reaver to mitigate the damage. Another dragoon being scooped up, so it's going to just be, it looks like bombs across all locations. Absorb initial fire. Nice targeting there by Monk. Looks like another siege tank going to fall. However, it gets a shot off putting the reaver into the red. A wraith being constructed to help deal with this dropship and a marine trying to provide some degree of anti-air. Monk creating a lot of harassment. Yeah, I like the Dragoons to the south to engage the dropship. <coughs> Should it move out as well? 
Monk applying a lot of pressure with minimal troops. Still down four workers, but that spread across several bases. <coughs> now maybe overstepping his bounds a little bit. Finally, that Wraith able to clear up that shuttle. Two kills on that Reaver, but one Scarab remains. It looks like it's going to be a dud. And the SCV is being retransferred. A lot of lost mining time. Fourth base is up. So now it is four base versus two base at a later mark. Plus one weapons has been very, very delayed. Yeah, just started for Ninja. And Ninja in a very much on the back foot here. Dropship exiting to the north. Another Nexus being grabbed. Monk being very aggressive economically. Might need to peel some units from... I don't know where he's going to get units from. He's got a handful of Dragoons at his natural, but two bases at risk to these Vultures. I don't think he realized that dropship slipped through. Ninja living up to his name. There is a cannon to provide some defense and maybe buy some time. The dropship actually just dropping one Vulture short. <coughs> Moving up to the natural, which might have been a mistake for Ninja because there's more sufficient defense here at the main, although Monk not responding very rapidly to either location. The probes attacking, able to clear things up at the third, but the worker count continues to plummet at the natural. And the dropship also able to scoot in and get a good amount of scouting before getting picked off. Getting a look at probably the light gateway count. I'm not sure that it saw the stargate warping in, however. Right now, Monk has a sizable economy to work with, but he needs to drop a lot of gateways in a hurry, actually, because Ninja looks like he wants to go ahead and go for a five factory push on that plus one weapons finish. And right now, Monk has expanded greatly, but hasn't dropped the sufficient... Well, first of all, Monk, Ninja's done a great job of keeping <coughs> that worker count low. <coughs> but secondarily, there's not been a raw gateway count. Mostly, looks like there's been upgrades in tech to try to deal with things otherwise. And Monk's supply is lower than it should be at this stage for Protoss versus Terran. Although I have to say, he's put in a lot of work. Thank you, Zimdi. I pronounced that correctly. I'm shocked at this, actually. Ninja constructing a third base. Monk making a little bit of a micro mistake, putting that shuttle a bit far forward. So dropping the factories before having that third expansion up, rather than going for the plus one weapons push, maybe wanting to expand to either the three o'clock location or maybe even go for his rear base here, the shuttle, mostly suiciding into scout. There's nothing inside of it. Maybe trying to draw troops back because of how light the attack troop count is. It looks like Monk is going to end up with some zealots that are stranded, getting caught by the vultures midfield. The Wraith lost track of the Wraith, actually, where it headed. It's somewhere out here. <coughs> it's hard to tell on the black tab, I'll tell you. Dragoon's going to go ahead and filter in from both directions, try to pin these vultures in, but that's going to be outnumbered fight right there. Monk having trouble organizing his troops and also dealing with mines. Midfield right this second, the Observer a little bit out of position to help make that a more favorable engagement. However, he is humming across now five bases. A lot of probes have been produced, not yet saturated or mining. Monk checking all the additional bases. It looks like Ninja waiting to go ahead and grab that third. He's got that command center just waiting <coughs> to go ahead and cap that additional base. Sizable factory count. I'm not sure that he has the economy to really support it. Plus one armor. <coughs> Excuse me again. Has been started. Oof. Tough cast today. Siege tanks in large numbers moving out. Supply counts even. Monk has now gained the worker count lead. He's at end game worker point. More photon cannons to defend against latent vultures, but I worry about Monk's just latent troop count here, although he does have some carriers starting to take the field. Not in sufficient numbers to be a massive threat, but maybe enough to deny that rear base that doesn't exist right now. In the meantime, Ninja starting to fan out to the south. Let's see if he starts working on this temple with just the vultures. <coughs> is mining that high ground, which is a critical area. Comsatting. 
maybe picking targets finding some zealots again in open ground really ninja's just been able to capitalize monk hasn't been making that many mistakes but the mistakes he has been making ninja has capitalized on them and just exploited them greatly as a ninja should zealot walking its way up trying to clear the mines the observer's been picked off so it looks like the rest of that attack force going to back off that is a huge amount of siege shanks i have to assume he's not going to attack into that it'd be suicide carriers good all the way around on this map because a lot of the map features we'll see if carrier production continues it looks like we we don't have a second stargate the upgrades waiting there carrier just going to stand there it looks like and provide a barrier group of vultures waiting to find a angle of attack more zealots exposed to the front i haven't seen any high templar produced yet we do have a single dark templar there carrier revealing itself to the north which might provoke some goliath production but honestly it's not enough to be that much of a threat on its own 10 supply lead now for monk he's got a sizable economic lead he has tacked on additional gateways working on plus one weapons but looks like again ninja going to be able to find a hole in the defense clearing out the cannons rapidly and the probe's going to scatter some zealots marching up provide some defenses actually might be a bonus for monk because he's a bit oversaturated in probes right this second needs to actually bleed off 10 or so to be maybe fewer than that to be at optimal production value across these bases the vulture is also going to stream into the north run into some cannons should be into that but monk going to expand again bottom right a probe on top of a mine here so not going to be able to grab that base so monk wanting to just grab absolutely everything well, Ninja sits on three bases. However, plus two weapons isn't that far from finishing. And I would expect Ninja to start making his way across the map. Once that happens, I see two carriers. I think one of them returned from that rear third. He's got a we have a handful of High Templar. Okay, upgrades, but that level two power spike is still very, very strong. And the other critical thing is if you just look at the let's see if i can find them all the raw amount of siege tanks here that is a lot of siege tanks let's see if all of them are dedicated to this attack however so yeah now moving out as plus two weapons just about to finish want triple carrier production top left flurry of compsats so ninja does basically deciding his angle of attack most of the troops for monk are in bottom right <coughs> so completely out of position to deal with this attack and i'm wondering if this is going to turn into a refugee base race sort of thing with all the turrets and the siege tanks here might be difficult the shuttle providing some scouting to the north looks like it was just going to check that rear base it's going to see that an scv has cleared that out to grab it but missed the bulk of this army now i think it's been scouted as you can see, a lot of that yellow moving towards the upper left on the mini-map. Siege Tank's having some trouble getting up to the high ground. How close the carrier's a ways off finishing it. Some pylons blockading. And a lot of the troops, yes, coming in from into a siege position from a disadvantageous angle. So Monk just going to reposition rather than attacking heads up. Wants to go ahead and dive into that third. Ninja in a good position to go ahead and attack two bases, although he's still having trouble clearing out the cannons to make it to that high ground there. The siege tanks are non-existent at the natural. I guess Ninja was just hoping on reinforcements, and now Monk might be able to just A move in. Looks like he's waiting for Ninja to move some troops back. One of the carriers picked off. Dark Templar creating a lot of havoc on the ground, forcing some comps at, but yeah, now clearing out the natural getting a few scvs there but with this ninja making a big blunder and just not having enough defense troops so having to split off the entirety of his army drop back from the attack didn't take out the nexus this is gonna buy monk more time to build more bulk to deal with this he's up 30 supply all of a sudden and high templar and everything else are now walking straight into the main just trying to get as far into that base as possible Psystorm. 
drawing that retreat. And they're just going to try to get in here and be as annoying as possible. Sidestorming. SCVs on the defense, sidestorming themselves. <coughs> but this is mostly to create some time to refill that troop count and play the macro war. Natural expansion gone. Three clock base is all that's mining for Ninja right this second, where we have multiple mining bases now. Although have they been, uh, I think they've been pretty well saturated. Yeah, it looks like the natural expansion and the main have been abandoned at this stage. Effectively, you have four Stargates producing carriers at this stage. Dark Templar finally taken out, but Ninja is scattering. Bottom right hand, wow, he's mining everywhere as well. So massive bank for Monk, a lot of resources to work with. He just needs to spend them all now and field a sizable army to defend. So this is a little bit deceptive because if you, if you deduct 40 here, that's 90. And uh, <coughs> you deduct 80, that's 80. So overall, Monk actually has the smaller army despite being up a massive amount of supply right this second. And he needs to scramble. If he can wipe out the siege, sh the latent siege tanks and everything else, it looks like Ninja gonna go ahead and grab that rear protected base finally. But if he can scramble and get enough carriers and everything else to go ahead and get uh, the carriers can be just an endgame win condition. Want to see what the uh, interceptor? It's hard to select an individual interceptor to get a good look at what the air weapon upgrade is. But I believe Monk has probably done a sufficient job there. Right now, it looks like there's enough. Goliaths to defend, and they probably have the upgrade advantage to make it happen. Opening up that rear so that the Goliaths can help defend the two bases. <coughs> but right now, Monk with a big supply lead. Dark Templar walking all the way up. The Goliaths looking to engage. Let's see if I can select single interceptor. Level 3 weapon, so they do have the current weapons upgrade advantage. The Goliaths do have, I think, sufficient damage to maybe pick, maybe not, to pick the Interceptors off. I guess it's that versus armor. There's no armor plating as of yet. There's shield bonus as well. Not sure what the shield bonus equates to, though, overall. So Ninja still on the defense, 200 supply, but realizing he's so far behind economically and that carrier account was overwhelming and that it was a dire situation, just going to GG. Monk deservedly advances to the round of eight. And we will see Ninja in the uh, final match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.